Hey everybody and welcome to another PSPP 1.6 tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how to go through the variable view and mess with all the options and how those options change the way the variables look in and out of the data and variable view. So let's open up quickly a data file and let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna go to open here, which is this version. And I'm just gonna open up an example from their uh, from their example set here, just so you can follow along with me now that we're past like opening up files in the series and now working with files. So let's go to, let's use horticulture.sav and let's open that one, okay? And so we've got two variables to work with. Uh, and let's take a look at what the data looks like. Uh, so we've got treatment and yield. So yield must represent uh, the lollipop guild. No, yield must reference the amount of plants or fruit or whatever that we get. Looks like we have about 100 or so as I'm scrolling. Again, this is not optimized for macOS, so we need to make sure that we, we got that. Okay, so we have treatment and yield, and so it looks like we have three different kinds of treatment, a control, conventional, and uh, traditional, and then yield is a variable. Okay, so let's go back to variable view and take a look at what kind of options we have here. So we have street, treatment and yield. These are the variable names. And of course, I said don't sort in my options according to a previous video. So we aren't going to do any any kind of sorting by name, right? So this is the order that they come in, although it's kind of funny that they are sorted by, <laughs> they are sorted by name. <laughs> which is kind of funny uh, because T comes before Y, of course. All right, so we have two different types here, string and numeric. Let's talk about the types of variables that um, S uh, PSPP can deal with. There are, as you can see, eight kinds of data types that S uh, PSPP, I keep wanting to say SPSS, PSPP can deal with. We've got numeric, which you can see yield is numeric. We've got comma, we've got dot. We've got scientific notation, which is uh, the value E, um, either a negative number, so E being the exponent, a negative number being to the right of the decimal point, and then E positive number, which is 10 to the positive exponent, which gives you a number to the left of the decimal point. A date, so you can specify that variables in your data set are dates, and that's how you want to use them. You may not be able to use them with the kinds of analyses that a PSPP can do, but dates would be useful for like, I don't know, time series analysis. Uh, you can use a dollar amount, and so that will specify that this is money, Custom currency, you can specify if there are pounds, um, euros, these kinds of things, okay? And then string. String is used for pretty much everything that is not a number, a date, or any other kind of value. So just be aware of that. Now, variable type and format is uh, what you can see here under type. And then width will tell you how much of a column width you want the variable values to have. And so uh, eight is the default for most numeric values. Okay, so a number. String, you can change. Now, I think for this particular one, they set the width for 16 for the treatment because some of these have longer names, like conventional is a pretty long value. And so you don't want the width to be too short, and then you have to use the uh, expander to widen the column or not widen the column. So 16 is the value that you use to make it um, bigger or less, uh, wider or less wide, right? And then really, that's all you do. You either choose, and this is, can only be mutually exclusive choices here, and then how big you want. You can either enter the value in or use the plus or minus signs here, which I, I do appreciate that the, all of the plus and minus signs are massive in this interface. You can't go wrong with hitting the wrong button. So let's hit OK here. So you can also do plus or minus within the width value here. So let me show you what this looks like if I put 8, which is, again, the conventional value. So we're going to put 8 and then click away from it. You can also click Enter. So let's go to Data View, and you can see that it cuts off the value. Okay, so you want to show the amount of information, okay, and as far as the width of the column, you can change by um, just dragging it. Again, it's a little slow, but it does do, it, it, it will do it eventually, okay, and so C-O-N-V, C-O-N is 4 and E-N-T-I is 8. So if we go back here, we'll change this to 16 just to make sure that all of that information is there, okay, you hit enter, and it's fine, okay. So let's uh, move on here. So we did type, so treatment is string, okay and yield is numeric. Let's go to decimal now. So decimal for string variables is not gonna work. There are no numbers here. So by default, it will make those zero. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the background. Uh, now for yield, we have two. Now it's gonna be useful when you import data to know how much of significant figures you want in your data. Now it's gonna depend on how many uh, decimal points you have, right? So if you're entering this in from a, from a raw collection and you only put in to data do that two values to the left or the right, excuse me, of the decimal value, then changing this from two to three is just gonna have a trailing zero. And I don't think that's necessary. Now you can shorten it if you only wanna have one decimal value. Um, and what that'll do is it'll do uh, normal uh, rounding, like uh, uh, five and above, round up, uh, four and below, truncate, right? So you can have one data value if you want. So let's see here, if we go to data view, let's just scroll up to the first case. 
Okay, so we have, <laughs> that's not gonna be helpful. Let's take a look here at this control, 43.46. We go over here to variable view and we change this to one, okay, hit enter. And then we go back to data view. You can see it's 43.46. Okay, so it rounded it 43.46 or 43.5. So you can change that if you'd like. Now, if I change this to three, you can see that what will happen is I will only have a trailing zero for all of these because the data, does, ooh, never mind. So the CSV does, <laughs> that's funny. The syntax does actually have um, values in here. Now, if you don't, okay, <laughs> I was, a little, <laughs> that's kind of funny um, that I was like, oh yeah, there'll be a trailing zero. Um, didn't realize that uh, they had more data in behind these values. Well, there you go. Okay, you can see that the, that does round as well. So it depends on how precise you want to be, I suppose, right? So uh, use that at your own discretion, okay? So we'll move on from that. We'll leave it at three. It doesn't really matter. Okay, now here's the next one. Label. We can write anything we want to in here, and then we can change how it's viewed. So let's go ahead and put in some fancy words. Treatment condition. Oops, condition. Hit enter, okay? And then uh, we'll say crop yield, because I don't, oops, it's a period, not an L. Crop yield, okay? So here we have uh, the labels now, right? Treatment condition and crop yield. You can see that those are slightly different from the names. I've made them capitalized and everything. So those are your labels. Okay, you can make this bigger if you want. Okay, it'll eventually get there. And there we go. Now, value labels is really important. You can't really do much with the string variables. So what you want to do is go ahead and open up the value labels box. And so the value that you want for each of these is going to be control, right? And then we want a one. And then we hit add. And so you can see it uses a back tick and a quotation mark for that. And so we're going to hit OK for here. Okay. And of course, I would put the other ones in, but in that case, I don't really want to. And you can see it changed all of my controls to ones. And this will allow me to do um, various uh, analyses with these treatments because SPSS and PSPP don't like string. Oh, there's my label. Okay, show value labels or do my ones. All right, let's go back to variable view. Okay, and then I could go through and change all of them. Of course, we want to leave none for yield because yield is a number. Uh, now we can deal with missing values and it opened up the missing values options here. So no missing values. We can use discrete missing values here. We can put in our 999, 99, whatever. We can use NAN if we want and uh, it will treat those values as discrete or we can put in a range if we want to. And that's how we deal with values there. But since there are no missing values, we can leave that as none. Columns, this is our column width here, I believe. Um, if we change that to, let's change that to five and hit enter and go back over here. Yes, that's right. It made them shorter. So you either can drag it with the drag cursor here, or you can make it like that. Align a left and right. So text is usually aligned left and numbers are usually aligned right. And then what kind of measure do we have? We can have one of three nominal, ordinal and scale, which is pretty standard nominal for mutually exclusive, ordinal for rank and scale for interval and ratio numeric variables. And then what kind of imp, uh, role that we have for each of these uh, input or uh, output, both none partition and split. So if you were to do a split, it would be a split variable that would show up here, like your filter or whatever, at any kind of partition values for none. You can have input and output variables. Output variables are usually things like residuals. Um, and so if you were to save residuals in a, let's say, a multiple regression, then you can put those in as a variable and it will be labeled with output. So other than my snafu on forgetting what value labels were versus um, labels and, and uh, variable names, uh, that's how you can um, use this. And then you would go ahead and open this into a, a analysis module and run your analysis. And that is going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave those down below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.